Let me see. Okay, last time we already talking about the, the cover. Only thing I want, make sure you understand you get the two different cover, okay? We're not talking about the design, the cover. We're talking about the binary cover and the BCD cover. The binary counter for four bit output they can counting from zero to fifteen. We're talking about a decimal for counting up, or they can counting down from fifteen to zero. And the second one will be BCD counter. BCD counter will be the same thing. They can count up or count down, depend on the IC. However, BCD only counting up to zero to nine. The thing that they work in like the binary, I like the decimal. So that's why decimal cannot get and a number greater than not. Okay. That's a thing you have to know. And also the IC. We already said if the number, odd number, they will be binary counter. For example, 74, 191, 193. That, I know that will be binary. However, even number like 190, okay, 192, 160, that's a BCD counter. And in order to make the counter working, then basically you have to know how to reading the data for that IC. What been doing what? How they can be load any number, how they can be reset the counter to zero how they counting up, uh, how they be counting down. That is your job. You have to understand. Now, a technician really at work, what you will be doing. First thing, you have to test the, the circuit board. The process how to start testing for the circuit board vary depending on the company. When you be high, someone will be working with you. 
but they will be helping you how to connect the circuit board into the system, how to run the program to test. At work, you don't have to write any program. The program to get the circuitry engineer, we already did it. However, when you run it, it can't get okay how it, if it fails. This is your job. You have to fake it. That means you have to find out what's wrong. If you say, okay, something wrong with the U1 or U2 or U3, you can give it to the assembler. They will change the new one for you. And after that, you try to test again. If it passed, that means okay, you get the job done. If still fail, you get still get a problem. That's the whole thing for the technician job in the company. Any company working with electronic or uh, any electronic circuit board, they're doing the same thing, same way. However, the different at the class, at the school for this program, you have to build a circuit tree to get along with the hardware. And also, you have to write your test program to get the circuitry. The reason we won, you develop the test program. We're asking for your understanding. Without understanding, you cannot make the counter working. For example, just a counter. Okay. Today, I suppose you go into the next one will be a memory, but I will be wait until next Friday. Today, we're talking about more things you need to understand on both the hardware and the software. Okay, now, I'll go in a little more detail on this very general IC you can see on the time in the circuit board. For, for this IC, we call it 373. Okay, at end 54, LS373. Okay, or at the end 74, LS 373 will be exactly the same. You understand at the beginning, we already talking about 54, 74. 54, that's for military, and 74 for commercial. They working identical. Only thing uh, for military, I see will be more reliable. Okay, so that's why if you bought fifty four LS three seventy three, they cost more than seventy four LS three seventy three. So first thing, if you're looking into that IC, you understand if they will be the, what they already said in here, detail, transparent, lock, okay? We already learning about a flip-flop. The flip-flop, they can be the lock or the, Extricate. Only the different name 
on that 74, 74, or, you know, the flip flop, they get on the two I see inside. Okay. This one, they make at flip flop inside I see. Basically, the flip flop, you get an input D output Q. If you counting, you can see. You can get an add input D and add output Q. Why they using add? The reason in the path in the computer, they will be at but. So that's why they make a one IC can cover for at but. Instead, if you're using only two flip flop inside, you take too much room on the board. Okay. Only thing I want to make sure when you're reading the input output table, you can understand. Okay. If output control low, Okay, C high, D high, and the output Q high. Output control low, C high, D low, output will be low. Okay, if output control low and C low, you understand C here. C that means pin 11. That means enable, okay? Enable. What that mean? If pin 11, see here, at the logic zero, that means the input of the D cannot get inside the IC, okay? Only thing is, you get the D input. However, if pin 11 C at a logical one, then input for D will be go inside here. Okay? They will be go inside. If a C pin 11, at a logical low again, you can change whatever input I have here cannot get inside. That's how C control. That means enable. And when the data already inside here, they cannot go to the outside. If the output control at a logical one. If you want the input inside the the flip flop here going out, output control must be zero. That's a very simple thing. How the D lot working. And if the output control at logic on one, output they say high input impeded. What that means? That means the output of the IC will be very, get a very big resistance. So no current can be flow into or outside of the flip lock. Okay, so that for this the last. Any question? Yeah, Mr. Fan, could, could you repeat what happened with when uh, OC pin number one is a uh, zero in comparison to one? Okay. OC, that means that one here, right? Yeah. If left at the zero, that means output control at the logic zero. They allow the data inside the IC 
can be going out. So you can see here. C here being enabled. Okay. If enable high, what happened? Enable high, that will be telling you any D input here can be go inside here. Okay. And output control low in data of the input D inside now can be go out. So that's why if you get a high in, then Q will be high. Okay, if you get a low in, output will be low. Okay, thank you. On an, only thing, if you get the output control low, however, enable here low, okay, then they don't care about the input here anymore. Output Q0, what that mean to you? When you're reading the data, you see that it's Q0 here. How about you understand? Who know? means there is not output from, from that chip. No, that's not quite. The thing is you already see the output control low. And only different will be enabled now instead high, now they low. That means they're not enabled. And they don't care about input D. 1D, 2D, 3D, so on. They don't care. And they say output Q0. Okay, if you don't know, I tell you. That means no no chance. Okay, what that means, no chance. That only telling you if it was one, now it still be one. It was zero, and now they still be zero. That's it, no chance. And the last one, if the output controlled high, we already not talking about Output high input impedance. High impedance. They're telling you the output of the flip flop will be get very big resistance. So basically, they're not allowed. The output can send any current to the outside. Okay. That is why all of them I see in the computer, most of them have to be high impedance, either input or output. The thing is the computer you get sitting wire or 32 wire for threat on, on data. And they can share with too many parts inside the computer. However, only one I see able to send out data or get the in data on the wire. So only one I see can be allowed to send the data out or get the data in. Okay, not two. If you get a two data connect output, 
at the same time in the bus, that means sitting wire. They're not working. Okay. And now on the second one, we don't have to talk more. You understand the this one will be a X trigger. The flip flop. Okay, we already learning from the flip flop. 74, 74, a trigger. A trigger that means you can get the output when you get the input and you have to get the clock going either zero to one or one to zero. So the output can be equal to the input. And now if you're looking on that one, you can see first one, output control low. Clock will be going from zero to one. Then if you get a D high, Q will be high. D low, Q will be low. Okay, that's what they saw right here. Same thing. If you get the output control low, However, you don't have a transition of the clock signal. Then the input, D will be don't care. Output will be no jam. Whatever it was, one, they still be one. Zero, they still be zero. And finally, output control high, same thing. Output will be high impeded. Okay, the difference between two IC 373, 74, if one will be large, at a logic high, for example, and one will be at a clock trigger. That's why they call it F trigger. Clock have to be going either zero to one or one to zero, depending on the flip flop. You understand you get a D flip flop, 74, 76. Clock will be negative going, okay? That means one to zero, they will be working. And the 74, 74, D flip flop, positive going. Clock have to be zero to one. Okay, so any question on that one? No, you be see here. It's a very, very general. Okay, I see, and you can see on the time. Now we're talking about buffer. Buffer, what that means, what we need to buffer. To, to make sure that the voltage is the, uh, the required. Yeah. Buffer mean input zero, output zero. Input logic con one, output logic con one, not in ten. However, output of the buffer, okay? If the input is logic on one is 2.2 volt, that's logic on one, 2.5 volt, logic on one. However, when they go in through the buffer, logic one still logic one, but the voltage can be go up to standard five volt, logic one, okay? And normally you can get 4.5, 4 volt or 3.5 volt. That's a good logical one. They try to increase more current. That's why we need a buffer, okay? On this buffer here, if you're looking into that, I talking about 541. That you will get into the lab, 541. You get eight input, one, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you can get eight output. That means every time you get eight bit, eight in, eight out. And everything be controlled by pin one and pin 19. Okay, first thing, pin one of pin 19 at the logic one, what happened? If this has a logic one, also this has the logic one. And what happened to this IC? Can either one or 19 be act like a clock if you want to hook a clock up to it? No, that's not clock. That's enable. So they can't be used the same as a 374? 374, that is a D-flip lock. It's just a buffer. Cannot hold the value. D-flip lock, if you don't want to change, they keep still there. On this one, if you change input, output will be changed. Right away. However, if we're looking into this IC, you can see they control by pin one and pin 19 for it. But my question is, if logic one apply to pin one, pin 19, so what happened to this IC? Either one be inverted because of the not sign it has to be inverted to zero. Yeah. However, supposed to be zero for working. But if it's logical one, I telling you, input output not the same. Input logic one, output cannot be logic one. The thing is do not allow input get into the output. If you want input high, output high, input low, output low, then pin 19 and pin one must be zero. That's a very simple. Input logic one, output logic one, input zero, output, output zero. But 19 and pin one must be zero. If they not, they will be high impeded. Buffer on the buffer work in the same way. We try to increase the standard logic at the output. However, if they not enable, look like I see not in there. They not connect into the system. So they not loading any current from the bus. You understand one tie of the buffer and the different will be the same thing. They can get 540, 541, 244, for example. A 245, same thing. They work in the same. They're not changing any logic. In and out will be the same. Only output will be go up to standard logic. If logic zero, the output supposed to be very close to zero. Volt. Logic one, they try to reach go up to four or five volt. That's it, that's a buffer. Okay, any question on it? Try state, output, buffer here. Not then you can see. This is, they given you the table. 
you see that? If you're looking into the table in here, A1, A2, right here. Pin 1 and 19, no. Input high, output high. 540, the opposite, okay? We don't care about that. Okay. E1, pin 119, pin 1, logic 1. You don't have a, you don't care on pin 19. Output high impedance, high impedance. Okay. Only thing is E1, pin 1, low. Pin 19 low, input low, output low. That's a very simple. Okay. Now, this one, also the buffer, 244. It is the same thing like the other one, only the different name. Pin one, they control one here, two here, three here, four here. That means pin one, they control four bit. And pin 19, they control another four bit. So you can see the difference between 541. 541, they control one at a time, eight bit. But did I see? They get the same thing, one and 19. But pin one control only four bit and pin 19 control another four bit, okay? If you want eight bit, then pin one and pin 19 must be low. Okay, that's only the difference. One, they can send the output eight bit at a time. That one you can send four bit at a time. Okay. Depending on pin one and pin 19, if both enable, then you can send eight bit. If you're using only four bit, then you only enable either one. On IT. That's a different. Okay, this is the coder. I'm talking about 139. The coder. This is the IC. For this decoder. Okay. Now, let's see. They can get G1, G2. That means pin number one enable for, let's see, enable for four bit. Okay. And pin number 15, enable for another, for width, for width, you can see, this is a one, two, three, four, okay? So this I see will be look like,
I'll put here one, two, three, four. Okay. And you get that select A1, B1. Do selection. One here. It is uh, A1, B1. Okay, and you get enable. Enable. Okay, now see how they work it. 14. If enable, that means I talking about only one, okay? The other working the same. This is pin number one. Add the logical one. So this is the two table here. This is the two table. If the enable add the logic one, what happened to the output? Y zero. Is high? One. Okay. This is the input coming in. This is the output. So. Now, if enable at a logical one, can you tell me what is the output? Hi. Perfect. You can see right here. Enable high. Don't care about input A mode, A1, A, B1. Output top to be high. All of them forward. Okay, so now if the next one enable now with zero, if you get a zero here, zero here, what happened to the output? Y zero is low and the rest is high. Perfect, if you're looking here, G will be enable low. So, if you get the A1, B1, B1, zero, zero, and Y zero low, and the red will be high. Only telling you, only output low at the top, okay? Just a minute. Okay, so now. For the decoder, depending on the selection on input A and B, and the enable must be zero. Only one output of the decoder low. If you change A and B, you see the next will be low, and the other will be high, and so on. You can see that. That is how the coder working. And the decoder will be using to control the IC when they connect together in the bus inside the computer. 
they allow only one IC able to sending out a data or receiving data at a time. So output of the decoder cannot be low all of them or two of them, only low one only. Okay. So that's why you're looking into that. Hopefully you can understand how the coder working. Inside 139, you get two IC inside. Okay. I just talking about one. The other one working identical. Different pin. Okay. Now. Any question on 139? Company will be using the same thing, too many. They have to follow it. And I'm not talking about 138 in detail. However, after you understand 139, easy to understand 138. You see that 138? Only one low, see that? Depending on input A, B, C, okay? Only one low at a time, but they get eight bit. 139, they get only four bit. If you want, you have to combine four and four to get the eight bit. So this is 138 decoder. Only one output low. So it's generate. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. So Y0 through Y7 is generating those highs and lows, depending upon what is enabled and selected, there is no real input. It depend on here. Input. Low, 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 ABC. Depend on ABC input, select. Lay on a 139, A1B1. On this one, they get three. That's why they get eight. Input selection A, B, C, zero, three, zero. The first Y, zero will be low. Okay. And the next zero, zero, one, the second will be low. They just follow that two table. However, they're telling you only one output will be low at a time. They get eight output. And if you're looking into up here, high only, see that? That means they did able, okay? They did able. If they enable, that means depending on G1 or G2, what logic, okay? High and everything low, that means enable. Either one, not following exactly high and low on the output must be high. That means the disable. When the disable on output have to be high, exactly 139. They get four bit output. If you disable, on four bit must be high. Okay. Any question on this two I see? Let's see. We don't have a, any more here. Okay, now let's see.
Okay, the question. Let's see. One ninety three. Now I'm talking about it. One ninety three. Okay, basically, if you're looking on 193, 16 pinches, they get output QA, QB, QC, QD, for bit binary, cow up, zero to 15, cow down, 15 to zero. They can load in any number, to the output. Why do we need the loading? Sometimes if you're not loading, you reset, clear the counter, they count zero to 50. Sometimes the people don't want count from zero. They want to count from number five up. Or they want to counting from number nine down. That they allow, you can load in number nine to the output and now you let it count down. Then they can go nine, eight, seven, and six and so on. Loading will be allowed for the counter to count from any number. Okay. Mr. Finn. Yeah. Do you know what a uh, ramp clock is? What do you mean oh, ramp clock? Ramp, ramping, like say for an oven, you want to ramp the, the time and the temperature from like zero degrees to 150 degrees. So you ramp from five degrees, 10 degrees, 20 degrees. So you, you slow do slow staircase. Yeah, but the thing is we not do anything. But the IC can, is with could be used in that situation where it's incrementally step up time wise when counting. So if it's basically you're talking about IC can be affected with the temperature. Yeah, and counting in degree and degree control, correct? Yeah. Yeah, I understand. However, you know the way we design the circuit board in the company. Okay, you after can... we're done with the electrical and you have to test for temperature. That means you put the board inside the temperature room, make sure they go really hot or really cold. And after that, you take it out, you run the test, they still pop. Otherwise, you have to fix it, okay? And then they have to test for vibration. That means the board put it in so somehow they can try to make the vibration. So guarantee after the testing and they take it out, they run the test, they still pop. Otherwise, need to be fixed. So then it is it can be used as a calibrator then? Yeah, everything. We don't care about that thing. Right. We care about the electrical. Okay, now if you're looking on this circuitry here. And the fourth thing, they get input for loading A, B, C, D. Output QA, QB, QC, QD. And the clear pin 14, active high. That means 
logic one has been 14, then output give A, B, C, D, must be zero. And the clear will be a higher priority for this counter. If pin 14 clear at logical one, then they cannot loading any number. They cannot counting up or down. So if take someone asking me, okay, if I get a one here, what input for up, down, load, A, B, C, D? The answer will be don't care. The reason we put a don't care, get only telling you if you apply logic on one to you to pin one and you measure the output QA, QB, QC, QD, they not zero. Only thing you have to do, you take U2 pin 14, you want logic one. If you not get logic one, that means somehow, okay, with the U2. But do not try to check up, down, load. The thing I did, they don't care. That's a very simple. By the way, on this circuitry, the way designed, if you get a one here, Go to the NAND gate, what you get? Zero, right? That's a NAND gate. When you get a zero here, they go to the clear U4, the flip flop. Then Q here must be zero. That's for clear. Clear connect to U2. Also, they also clear U4 to zero. Okay, if you get any questions, just go ahead and ask, okay? We cannot go to own up the, the lab in the too much detail. Okay, now we're talking about load. Okay, load, 14, you want loading number five, okay? So you say this must be zero. Now, load have to be zero. Number five will be zero, one, zero, one. And the output will be Zero one, zero one. What happened to up and down? The thing is lot of second priority. If you load it, you cannot count. So that's supposed to be don't care. Don't care. Okay, that is set, set it up for loading. If the output you get not zero one zero one, some must be wrong. What can we do? 
tell me step by step and and that will be telling me you know how to couple shooting. If I want loading 0101, and when I get the output, they not 0101, what can I do? I'm not telling you try to take the wire. No. Only thing when you find somewhere wrong, then you can take the wire. But you must be doing like I take you right now. If you apply exactly what we said, but the output is not coming out like what you want some wrong. So that fell. Tell me, what can you do? Show you the that, clear? Yeah, just tell me, Steph, what can you, what you do to solve the problem? The, ba the basic is to, to check if the chip is powered and then check if a clear is a, check the state of clear. <coughs> I tell you, power that normally you must be checked at the beginning, right? Yep. Better check at the beginning, make sure the IC, IC get the power and drive. So I'm not talking about power and drive. Okay, now, okay. if it fails, you know there's something wrong. What I want you, you're using the DMM meter, major VDC. First thing, you connect your U2 pin 14. What you want? Zero. Zero. Okay. If you get a zero, what night? Uh, Take where? What you want? Uh, we have to check low. Exactly. After that, you measure U two pin eleven, right? Yep. What do you want? You want zero? Zero. If you get a zero, what night? I don't know. <laughs> you make sure. Pin 15, they support to be one, right? But, yeah, but but you said that 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 was the main assumption that uh, the the input is one zero one zero. So we we agree that the input is there, right? You said that. Yeah, but the thing is, right now it failed. Oh, uh, okay, okay, okay. That's why we have to troubleshoot it. So after you. Major pin 11 load, you get zero. Okay. The next you will be major pin number 15. Should be one. Should be one. If you mm -hmm. get a one, then you major pin one. Should be zero. Right. And pin number 10. Should one. be one. Pin nine. Zero. Zero. That means you get input everything right. Is correct? Yeah. So, okay. if, so, so far we have clear is okay, load is okay, and the input is okay. And you said the power is okay. So maybe the chip is not working fine. Is the chip the chip is fail? Okay. okay. Now you get the input, everything good, and the output is not good. Okay. Normally. 
at work are talking about at work. You not deal with the wire. The wire cannot be wrong. Then you can give a, to a similar people you want to remove and change the ill joke. And they did it for you. Some different company. Some company technicians also have to read, have to do it by yourself. Then you can ill joke. Then that again. And they support you be working. So how troubleshooting? Troubleshooting that telling you you get the right input, but you not get the right output. You get that? Yes. Now I talking about the lab in the class. When you when you the test fail, they did play expected data. Zero one, zero one. And now they did play major data. They can say one, one, zero, one. Okay? So expected data, that means the data you want. Major data when you run the program, computer major, they give it. So if you're looking, compare between expected data and major data, wake one, but be in draw. The, the, the last one uh, looks wrong. Okay, last one telling me you to pin number. Uh, nine. Nine, the input, when they display, they display the output, not the E. That means they display QA, QB, QC, QD. You know that the fourth one will be QA. That one will be QD. QD. So they they fail at what pin? QD. Pin seven. Right? Yeah. Pin okay. Seven. Now, if I'm looking at the output, I know wrong right here. Okay. What can you do? I'm talking about in class lab. Okay, that means in the lab, in the, in this program. Do you know when you're looking into the display message fail, you get an expected data and a major data. Expected data means data you want. Major data, that means a computer major telling you. In this case, you know some wrong at you to pin seven. What can you do? Can we check the input uh, pin nine? Now, what you need to do is you measure you to pin nine, right? Yeah. So if you get a zero, Then what? I'm talking about the lab in the in this program. You know wrong at the QD pin seven. So that's why you have to take the input for D. You measure U to pin nine. You want zero. Now you get zero. 
Mặt ngay Ok You don't know I don't know Ok That will be telling you You get the input zero How output is not zero Okay, if you're working in the lab, then I'm telling you, looking into YouTube pin saver to uh -huh. see how many wire connect into pin saver. One. Maybe you can see more. Okay. This okay. Did be I supposed to be more than one? Okay. And what you need to do is connect the beta into pin seven U two to measure the voltage, and you just remove one wire connect to U two pin seven at a time. Okay. 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 If Thank any you. wire. You looking at the uh, U two seven, you get a zero. So that wire caught the problem. Got it. Then you have to fix that to see how that wire connect into pin seven and where they connect to. Just take the wire. Now, if you get only one wire connect into the the other IC. So when you remove the wire from U2 pin seven, the logic zero now, they're telling you the wire from U2 pin seven, they go to the wrong place. Then you take that wire. So, if you know how to read this thing, you don't have to go check everything at a time. You don't have to. You just take the pin seven and go back to take a pin nine. You don't have to go from pin 15, one or 10. They're not wrong, so don't worry, okay? Two pins can change. Yeah, if you take your own no more wire connect into pin seven, you still get logic one. Change the IC. That's it. The big problem to your guy to do the lab is the IC is cell they not working. So if Q pins aren't the same as input, then you got a problem. Two pin. If if your input pins aren't the same as your output pins, your IC has a problem. If the input and the output are same, then your IC works. Okay. Right. Okay. Now, if you say they measure the output, look like. They display. Now you get two output wrong. One here wrong. One here wrong. Then you have to check the input pin 10 and pin 9. That is supposed to be go to output six and seven. And it's only one way. Yeah, that is the way how to top and shoot it. So make sure that you follow the arrow. You can check the pin six output back into pin number 10. 
input and that's why you have to do the same thing like I already told you. You can remove, just lift it up, the wire connect into pin six. Try to see if they can get the logic one or not. If no, that I see problem. If you get one, that means the wire go wrong where? Somewhere. Then now you take that wire. I can tell in you, if you know how to do and what you do, you don't have enough time to do your job. Okay, that means the loading tab. Okay, now we're talking about counting up. To counting up, you can see up and down. Okay, counting up, you support to get clock going here. And this have to be logic one here to counting up. Now, clear must be zero. Load must be one. Input load don't care. Why don't care? Why input load? Maybe don't care. Every time I ask you a question, whoever can answer right away, that means you understand. Otherwise you still get lost. Now I'm telling you, Input load ABC don't care the thing is. They only care when load equal zero. That means pin 11. Then you care. And now they want, they not loading. So that's why we don't care about input. That's why I telling you don't care. Again, make sure you understand. When we said don't care, I mean do never measure anything at input A, B, C, D. So does that mean that on Q, will that value 1010 be there? No, no that... it'll count. they supposed to be counting. They supposed to be count zero, zero, one, they count to one, for example. Then they count to two every time they get a clock. So that's why they fail. If they not get the correct output. Okay. And now we have to trouble for counting up. First thing. What you need to do is make sure you get the clock. Okay. The clock going here. You can see that they going here. Right here. That's the clock. And from the system, you apply and clock. That means they will be look like this one. 
okay? And for the counting up, this must be at the logic one. Okay, see what happened. You get the one here, go to the name gate. So they will be zero. Adding to the clock. So basically in here, you get zero. Adding to the clock. Clock negative go to the name, they inverted. That's why you get the positive clock. So you measure at the L1 pin 3, you support to see the clock. Okay? Now, if you see the clock, and you can see what happened. You get the one here, go to the man. you get a zero. And zero go to another name, you must get a one. So that connect to down, okay? So that is what you need when you try to troubleshoot it. If they not counting. Okay, now counting down, only thing is this pin seven ten to zero. Okay, and they will be counting down. That only telling you, if you turn it to zero, the output here must be one. And the clock now will be go here. Okay, so if you checking at the pin number four down, you see the clock. Pin number four, pin number five up, you see logic one. They will be counting up. Okay, so that we'll be talking about Counting up and counting down. And that's a 16 bit counter. Four bit. Four bit. You get a QA, QB, QC, QD, only four. But you zero up to 15. 15, all right. 15, I was thinking 16. Yeah, right. zero to 15, 15 to back to zero. Okay, so basically you want to count up, then you apply PA pin seven at logic one. If you want to count down, apply logic zero. Now, only one thing, you two, we already test everything. You test clear. You test a function for loading. You test a function for counting up. You test a function for counting down. What else on you two we not testing? Who can tell me? What else? On the L2, we're not testing yet. COBO? Exactly. CO and BO, output. CO being carried out. 
be all body out, bottle out, do output. Could, Get the could output you, 10 seconds. Yeah, could, could you repeat, uh, Mr. Fam? What does it mean? See out, be out? See out, see out. Carry out. Be all. Borrow out. That means the output is not that yet. Doesn't that mean uh minus one or sub, uh, plus one bit? Well, that means the output from CO and BO is not being that up to now. So you cannot say you to complete working. If you say you to complete working, you have to test every input, every output. Now, let's see, we get a time in here. Oh, man, we don't have a timing for this guy. Okay. However, I can tell you, this output here, normally, they will be high and then go low and then go high. You see the output will be look like. What that mean? That mean when they go up to one, 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 and they up, one on one, then they go down. Then they go low. That output telling you what? When I see the negative pulse coming low, I know the counter complete one cycle. They count from zero up to 15, go back to zero. And then, now they start over. When they go low, we know they complete one cycle, counting. Why do we need that? If you know in your watch, you get the first one, here, the second, the second one circuitry for minute, a second one, circuitry for hour. So when the counter counting up to 60 seconds, they sending this output. And this negative positive here go into the minute circuitry. When the minute see this going low, they know they already get 60 seconds and the minute count one. And that output the same connect into the hour to monitor that output. Whenever they see the output of the minute circuitry go low, they know they only get 60 minutes. Then the hour will be counting one hour. So that is the reason why we need the CO. And also we need the BO. Same thing. They high, then they go low. BO mean when they count from 15 down to zero. Before they go back to 15, that output BO will be low. So now. If you're using the manual testing, 
manual, that means what? Do using the oscilloscope, connect into pin 12, CO. And you can see the signal. Like I already draw it up for you to see it. Then verify it working. However, we in the automatic testing, I want to make sure when they count up to 15, they get negative coming. That's why I using the end gate here. And that connect to the preset of the JK flip flop. At the beginning, we already know that zero. So when you get a negative coming out, that negative here will preset that flip flop to be logic one. So if we get logic one here, we know for sure we get the the pause coming up. That is automatic. Okay. And uh, you understand a uh, that will be answered to one student asking me the clock will be negative or positive. I said the clock will be positive. However, on this one, we design both up and down. So that's why apply clock must be negative. The thing is they go into the NAND gate. So that's why they will be positive when they connect to U2. The 193 on the left seven, a little different. That means auto counting up, auto counting down. That means after they count down and automatically they counting up, you don't have to apply either logic one, okay, in like PA pin seven or logic zero for count down. That automatic. They counting down. After down, automatically they count up. After up, automatically they counting down. They keep go over and over. Okay, any question? If it's not, okay, one thing I want to talk to you about the software. The loop, okay. Now, let me share. I will be get the program, a simple one. That will get telling you one sixty counter. Make it short. Let's say just a minute, I get 160.
Okay, I get one city. Let I say we will be CD counter. They get input clear. Load and count it. Okay. So basically you can load in like the other IC, no big deal. However, the counter only count up zero to nine and to zero. Okay, on this IC. So general, you can see data 244 buffer. Data 244 buffer. For bit, for input, and for bit, for output. And pin one already draw. So whatever PA one, two, three, four, will be going to A, B, C, D. If you load it, I'll put here. And this buffer of 19 draw, you suppose you get whatever in QA, QB, QC, QD. Okay. And then you can get a clear logic zero active low that means zero you clear the output to zero okay and counting so they will be applied a clock positive not negative okay this simple from the program they get a wrong and we cannot jam that. However, I say P clock, and you will be applied P clock. They count zero to nine. Now, in order to see how did I see working, this is the timing here. Okay, first thing clear. You see, clear zero. Normally one. When it's zero, the output supposed to be zero. Okay, doesn't matter what A, B, C, D supposed to be. Now, if you're going down here. Okay, so this is the clear is zero. However, QA, QB, QC, QD is not zero yet until you see the clock going zero to one. Then the output will be zero, 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 zero. That will be telling you what? Did I see completely every function must be controlled? by the clock transition, okay? So that's why when you try to test the clear, let's see, we are clear. Oh man, that what the program, I don't want that. This is just simple. But what I said, even loading data are clear. You must call this function so they can be working. Otherwise, they not. Based on that, okay? Let me get the right program, okay? With the everything. Let's see, 160 count over here. Any more 160? Hmm. 
we get only one. Question, Mr. Finn? Got a minute. Okay, now let's see. You see the tap for clear. Is that a tap for clear? You say dry pot A. Here. And you must be apply P clock, okay? And now they're telling only thing telling you. You apply the clear, but they're not clear yet until you get transition clock zero to one. Same thing for the load, okay? And now for the student try understand if you get that one, pot A, you see that? That load, that's what you need to write to pot A. So you can go into here for that number one, load that zero one, zero one. So you write to pot A. And then for that one in pot D, you write zero one. That's what you write zero one. Then you must be applied the clock. And this is my software. You just follow exactly, it cannot be checked. So I just telling you how to convert it from pot A, B, C, D into the software. So now every test will be stuck test number. The title, this is the title I give it to you. Effect data from post C. You can see that one here, effect data will be zero 05. Okay, map data will be zero F, P cop, L1, L2. At this, if you understand, you're looking into port A, B, C, D, you're able to convert it into the software. Now only I want to talk about the loop. Okay, this is the loop. Fourth thing, you understand in the loop using the for loop. For J equal one. And the next will be if J less than or equal 10, J plus plus. That means you telling the computer start J equal one. And Every time they go through it, they increment J. If they equal 10, they stop at this. Inside the loop, first thing you must be open the press. 
they're carrying you for what you do inside the for loop. For thing, if you understand how many times, how many tests they will be run for the loop. 9 times you be 10 time day 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 that means they will be doing 10 time isn't it from 0 to 10 so that'd be 11 right uh if you are all have to be 9 mr fan your loop is from from one to nine, because you, you, you're you saying where that J has to be, okay, ma, okay, no, no, never mind. 10 times, you're right. Okay, they're telling you, when you say it's a J one, if they let them 10, that means they do 10 times. Okay, when they equal 10, they stop. J plus plus means they increment J, after they doing here. So that means they supposed to get a 10 num test number. If you put a test number five up here, that only telling you only test five, but not six, seven, eight, nine. So that's why you must increment the test number inside the for loop. They do one. If uh, before, the test number here four, then now they will be five, and the next time will be six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, and now if you apply the clock, they will be counting. However, now how come I said if they less than ten? Expect the data, I want that to be there. Otherwise, I want it to be zero. Why that happen? You understand me? Output of the counter stack zero. You apply the clock, they count what? Next, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, seven. Okay, nine, up to nine. Okay, then J1. I'll put you want it to be a one. J two to be a two. However, if J equal 10, after they count up to nine, they must be count back to zero. So that's why. If they less than 10, zero to nine, I want I'll put to be a J. However, if J equal 10, I'll put not J. The thing I'll put go back to zero. So that's why we have to use an if statement here. If they let them 10, so is they it, J, is it up? otherwise zero. Any question? Yeah, Mr. Fam, so that is a way to reset your counter? But keep going. Apply the clock for each step. Okay. For thing J equal one. Okay. Go out here, they say increment that number. Then they do apply the clock. What do you think they will apply the when they start zero to apply the clock and the output support to go to one? Okay. And if the next time they apply the clock, they go to two and so on. Up to nine. However, if J equal to 10, that means at that time, the output go back to zero, not to 10. So that's why we have to use an if statement here. Right, that's why I thought it was 11. So it doesn't get to 10, it just goes back, it actually skips. Yeah, when they equal J equal 10, output go back to zero. So that's why. If J less than 10, then that means J zero, J equal one to nine, I'll put the same J. J one, I'll put one. J two, I'll put two, so on. However, when J equal 10, I'll put it not 10. 
I'll put go back to zero. Okay. That is how normally you see that to open the breath in here for for loop, then you must be get the glow here telling and for loop. That means they will be run 10 times inside that. Instead, you can do by hand typing 10 left for each one. Then you can use in the loop, they doing everything for you. That's why I try to get along with the for loop. Later, do testing memory. They get 512 location in the memory you want to test. You don't want to write 512 tests for one data and another 512 tests for another data. Cannot. That's why you must be using the for loop. They can just a few lines of coding and they will be doing 512 tests for you. Very, very important. Okay. So next time we can go into the memory. However, I will be concentrated later on how to help you to do your lab. That means how can we get to the pot A, pot B, pot C, pot D? How can we transfer from that pot A, B, C, D into the software? And also helping you, if this test fail, what can you do? Okay. The thing is you have to get through the lab in order to complete the program. Okay. Any question up to this point? Yeah, Mr. Fowler, I was just kind of just playing with your code. Uh, just questioning was if our P clock and N clock. P clock and N clock is just transition. You're just looking for the transition, right? Right. So you, so you P clock, they mean one go to zero. Right. So, N clock, oh, P clock means zero to one. N negative clock will be go one to zero. And that system do it for you. Right. And that's where I'm just questioning. You technically can't set n clock or p clock to a a frequency you can't set it to like frequency and, depending on the x go up or down so you can can you put a value a, a numerical value on p clock for when the transition would be more accurate I mean, no, no, the transition either they apply one then they go to zero Right, so that's only on transition, right? Yeah, a zero to one. The transition, different from last, last mean logic one. Transition clock only X positive, negative going. Okay, now that coming out from the system. If you say P clock, they given you high to low. That's it. If you're looking at the output, you cannot see anything at that P cloud. The thing is, they already disappear. They just transition one to zero. No more. So if you want to see the cloud, then we have to use in the software. Adding into that. And now you can use in the Oscilloscope, looking on the P clock, you can see they just a square way, okay? The transition. But you can but set the thing the is, after you guy can get through, you know how to do what to do. And I teach you a little more using the software, 
OK， 就 double short it。Well, can't the percentage of the transition determine when it's going to flip higher or low? Yeah, but the thing is that doesn't care about the percentage. Right. Not high, low, or low, high. Okay. Any question? Mr. Farm, only one question. What what was the main difference between the the ICLS three seventy seventy three in comparison to LS three seventy four? That's a different. I see. Yeah, but but you say that the the seventy four is a eight three trigger. Seventy four. Main commercial. Okay. Fifty four. Military. The name one ninety three, or three fifty four, whatever. Just the name of the IC, but you don't care about fifty four or seventy four. Fifty four for military. You bought it, got a lot money. 74 commercial, not good reliability, like military. The edge edge trigger versus transition. What's the comparison? Like, say, if it's negative transition versus positive transition, where is the comparison of the edge trigger? Is how, where where exactly is the edge considered? No, the actual when you're looking in the IC, you know that the positive or negative. That's all the edge trigger really means is positive or negative. Right. And so the system, our system will be given to you that transition. Right. So edge trigger basically means the same as positive clock or negative clock. Yeah, it can. P clock, zero to what? And then either. Either the P clock or the edge trigger has a percentage of of transition within positive or negative. That that transition percentage can can it be set by software or is that set by IC manufacturer? By by the system and by the system that means by the hardware. The hardware, right? On the system. That means we wrote the software to create the P clock goes coming out at a certain pin, and also N clock coming out of a certain pin. Your guy just using it. So depending upon how you want to use which one you want. Well, yeah. Then, like, say if you, if your transition is only a percentage, like say an amplitude, then you can put a buffer buffer in depending on your circuit, and it'll it kind of bypasses the your percentage to a uh, uh, an exact amplitude level. I mean, it really depends on how you want to play with your ICs. Right, I understand, thank you. Okay, when you need to be stop using on that function. Right, one's more uh, like buffered is like, goes straight to your value versus the uh, edge trigger can be percentage control. Yeah, buffer just given your signal in, signal out. You can connect the P clock into the buffer. Only thing is coming out of the buffer is still P clock. Nothing else. I already oh. said P clock coming in zero, coming out zero. Buffer is more more P clock than it is N clock. They can be N. So there can be instead of going from two point two to uh, say yeah, they four. try to make it better. Right, so if it goes from 2.2 to 4, right? Right. It can, it can also sub do a subtraction then. Right. A 4 go to 0. Depending on P or R. That's it. Okay? Thank you. So, good night, everyone. Okay? Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Have a good weekend. Good night, Mr. Fan. Good night. Good night. Good night.